Welcome everybody, welcome back to another amazing episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. That was a long intro, long stream in. Long you know? stream intro? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what my yeah. wife will tell you. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Too maybe long. we need to shorten that up a little a whole bit. minute, yeah. Nah. <laughs> uh, I'm Rick, I'm your host. And I'm Dave. The other host. <laughs> Dave the other. The other. Uh, we're doing Shade Spire still. Still. It's like, you're saying it like we've been doing it forever. Have we not? <laughs> You painted your first mini on Monday, on Tuesday. Yes, I Tuesday. did. No, we haven't been doing it for long. So yeah, uh, we'll just uh, be wrapping up some of the models we started, uh, getting those sort of ready. But yeah, a little bit more of the Warhammer sh um, Underworld Shadespire. Mm -hmm. uh, you're painting the Stormcast Eternals. I'm painting, paint, uh, yeah. Yeah. painting the Blood Reavers. The Blood Reavers. Blood Reavers. With their okay. axes and such. Yep. And I brought in a particularly wonderful paint, which I'm going to throw into the close cam here. Blood for the Blood God. It's pretty nice. It is pretty cool. So this will uh, be getting a run this afternoon. Okay. We'll oh, you're going to put that on some of the weapons? On some of the weapons, yeah. Nice. Maybe some little blood spotters. We I know, can we'll, dig it. We get to see where, uh, the, where less is more in the case of the application okay. of, uh, of gore. Nice. You finished up uh, a miniature what, yesterday for an article you're working on? Is yep. that right? Yep, I did. Uh, yeah, so... We've been talking with uh, Jerome from Game Trade Magazine, and as a part of the sort of ongoing expansion of Painting Happy Little Minis, mm -hmm. we're going to do um, articles for the magazine, or an article each month nice. on painting. So we've got uh, the first one I worked on was uh, painting red, or painting like a rich red for I mean, uh, a cloak. Guys, it looks awesome. The uh, miniature you painted looks amazing. It's not bad. It's not bad. We'll show everybody it uh, once the article comes out. I think it's going to be in June, the June oh, okay. issue. Nice. That'll so. be for uh, at Origins. Yep, just in time for Origins. Which will be amazing it's and a lot cool. of fun. I'm trying to find uh, the cards that have these characters on them again. Oh, so okay. I can look at uh, some of their other pieces here. There you go. Liberators. Okay. There we go. Let's see if that'll help me out here. Somewhat, I think. Yes. Nope. Can I help you? Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so on uh, Tuesday, we talked a little bit about the game, uh, about it being a like a deck building, primarily a deck building game. Mm -hmm. But the uh, using the board and the miniatures to move around and bring you into a situation where you need to be sort of using your cards to gain an advantage. Right. And just today, I think, on the Warhammer Community website, mm -hmm. which I think is warhammer-community.com, um, they published, uh, well, they've updated their card library for Shadespire. Nice. So two two new factions went on pre-order on Saturday. They'll be available in stores on this coming Saturday. Okay. And uh, yeah, 120 new cards were available. Nice. With those two expansions. So. Um, what were the uh, new faction? Uh, there's the Fast Riders. Okay. Uh, or Fast Riders group uh, group who are another Stormcast Eternal group. Okay. But they're all, uh, they all have ranged weapons. Oh, nice. So rather than needing to be sort of one square away to mm -hmm. be able to swing your hammer, that sort of thing, they've got these uh, bolt storm pistols, Ooh. which are kind of crazy crossbow pistols. That's on slick. Which are pretty neat. Uh, and I think you can fire those up to three hexes away. Dang. Which is nice. Uh, and there was another corn uh, group. But w where these guys are all sort of bare-chested and mm -hmm. um, lightly armoured. These other ones are, uh, there's four in the warband. Three of them are heavily armoured Chaos Warriors. Okay. And one of them is a Flesh Hound of Corn, Dang. which is a demon. That sounds it's sort of in hound shape. <laughs> Deadly. Deadly, yeah. So all right. Very cool there. Where are... Some good pictures of these weapons. Cannon says, hey guys. Hey, hey, hey what's Cannon. up, Cannon? How you doing? Cannon, how's uh, how's Shadespire doing in your store? 
a question for you. I'm going to share this real quick. Oh. Luna just said her poop. It's a little ominous. No. no. <laughs> what did you His mean by that? The store is in Las Vegas. That is correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, he said good. Cool. Just good. Not great. No. How do you feel about the uh, organized play materials that uh, GW is sending you. Is the community getting into that? I hope they're doing, they're doing pretty well. Getting good, <laughs> they're getting into it? <laughs> get, getting good uh, 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 OP stuff. I think they're getting good stuff, but I was just curious as to how would I like to call the real community? I, not me. Right, not, not just me. I mean, no, I, I no, I get it. It's like, it's it's part of that. Like, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, we're we're kind of like in this like weird universe of we have most of the games available to us. Yep, but we never have the time to play them. Exactly. <laughs> it's like ah. Yep. It'd be great to head to the store and play in the Chase by a League regularly. Yeah. Cannon said, I decided to go with Fry Slayers. Yep. It the seemed to be one of the most organized play driven games that they have come out with. Yep. I would agree. Yeah, the Fire Slayers are the, um, the dwarves. Oh, oh you okay. like them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those dwarves aren't slick. Yeah, they look very cool. That particular warband's called the Chosen Axes. And have a guess what everybody's armed with. <laughs> hammers. <laughs> hammers. Totally hammers. <laughs> I must admit, I did see a, a comment online somewhere when the pictures first surfaced. And they're like, really? It would have been really nice if one of them had, like, had a sword and one of them had like, a hammer. <laughs> and it's like, and then they wouldn't be the chosen axes. That's true. Like, the chosen beards. The chosen weapons. <laughs> the chosen weapons. Yeah, it'll be a lot broader. But, uh, yeah, I think they're yeah, quite cool. Do they stick to the, like, regular Dorvan lore where they live in, like, mountain um, areas and stuff? I've got to admit, I'm not sure what the, uh, how the, the lore for, for dwarves or the, um, I think the Dwarden is what they're called now. Uh, I'm not sure sort of how their law works now in Age of Sigma. But I think there are a variety of um, quite different dwarven groups, okay. nations, factions kind of thing. Cannon says, going to be painting uh, mine soon. Had to take a break to paint one of the Harry Potter miniatures. Oh. Nice. You got a Harry Potter miniature? Have you seen, have I've cool. seen those? I've seen I them. They're, they're nice. Yeah. I have, yeah. They are really nice. They do look awesome. The, uh, and at the moment, with my daughters, uh, with Emily, actually, my eldest daughter, mm -hmm. we're reading through um, the Harry Potter series. Oh, nice. We're on uh, Chambers, Chamber of Secrets at the moment. Okay. Which is a great book. Very cool. The Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets. So at the great Philly Comic Con coming up yeah. at the end of the month, is uh, one of their special guests is the janitor. Oh, August Harry Filch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the character is August Filch. Right. I'm not, I couldn't tell you who the, the actor's name is. Actor's name. Yeah. David Bradley. Jesus. David Bradley? David Bradley. Nice. You guys I just know that because beforehand. I know that no, he played didn't. the uh, the first Doctor, Doctor Who, and um, they brought him back for the Christmas special, I believe it was. Yep. Really? Yep. He played the, played the first Doctor? Well, not the original first Doctor. Obviously, like the original first Doctor has passed away. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. He's an actual Time Lord. He's just <laughs> aged really well. <laughs> Definitely. So, okay, so he played the part of the first Doctor in one of the Christmas yes. specials. Okay. I see. 
Cool. So he's going to be at the Philly Comic Con, and uh, I'm hoping to go up there and get a picture with him. But I want to like get the picture. I'm like all where I'm all happy, and he's like the guy. Got, <laughs> got, got that, <laughs> the filch yeah. face. The, the filch face. Yeah. Awesome scowl. Yeah. That'd James is cool. here. Craig is here. Cannon says he got seven of the miniatures. Nice. The Harry Potter ones. Wow. That's cool. And Craig also says that actor was in Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, he was. Yep. Uh, Which. Um, he was uh, Walder Frey. Evil. Yes, he was. Ew, he was the Frey. Yeah. yeah. So lots of reasons to get a picture with him. <laughs> Cano says, my daughter is doing the same. She just started the Half-Blooded Prince. I told oh, cool. her that when she finishes the series, I'm taking her to, to Universal Studios. Nice. Oh, very cool. A, well, that's really cool. I'm not making that promise. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't actually told my daughters that that exists. <laughs> Probably good. Smart. <laughs> I'm going to wait for a little while. Save up some cash. Apparently, the one in California is a lot smaller okay. and much more like, kind of like Hershey Park here. Like, it's something you can do in like a day. Oh, it is. And I okay. was like, that kind of sounds nice, like a little bit less intense. Okay, that's cool. Then like the ca- the Florida one. Yeah. Which is awesome. Um, like, like yeah, it's amazing. My wife's been to the Florida one. She was down in Florida at a conference. Okay. And it was in February, and she sent me a photo of her sitting outside next to a palm tree drinking butter beer. <laughs> well, we had three three feet of snow. We had three feet of snow here? Yeah. I don't remember that day. No. That was a while ago. <laughs> it was a day. <laughs> it was a day. No. <laughs> it was uh, like 2010. Oh, okay. You remember snow again? Uh, I wasn't here yet. I didn't live oh, here. Oh, okay. I was still in the military. Oh, jeez. Craig says, if y'all haven't seen my homemade Haklu zombie beholder, it's done and posted to the group page. <laughs> no, we saw it, man. I saw yep. it. It was good. Did you start with something at the center and then just hot glue around and around and around? <laughs> I feel like that would be the easiest yeah. to do. Have Someone seen? had commented yeah. if it was a Mario plant monster... That right. was the, like the core piece to the, like for the mouth and everything. Right. Yep. Okay, so you're saying that was that was in the center and yeah. Oh no, I mean that's what it. they they had commented. That's what it looked like it was. Okay. That not that it was. I don't. Want, I mean, I don't want to say that. <laughs> Dave, what colors are you using on the skin? Or uh, did you use on the skin? On the skin for this guy. Yeah. Uh, for the body's sake, I started with uh, charred brown from. Um, Vallejo, from the uh, Vallejo game color range. Um, so charred brown, you can barely make out down the bottom there. Uh, and then highlighted it up by mixing in some of the game color tan for that. So probably got a, up to a 50-50 mix of those two. And then uh, for some final highlights, I don't have it on the table here at the moment, but I mixed in a little bit of uh, pale sand as well but, uh, nice and then for the um, the scars across there I use uh, basically some straight uh, tan and, that, and then a little uh, sort of thinned wash of um, some red red ink nice but, uh, yeah it worked out pretty well Craig says, a Mario Piranha plant as the mouth. Like, that's what people were yeah, commenting on. Yeah. Um, he says, and a marble for the center eye. Okay. Cool. cool. That's neat. Yeah. So, tomorrow we've got building character. Okay. And uh, we've got three choices of characters. We're going to be doing two. Carrie and I will be each doing a different character. So hopefully the the masses will vote on the two that they want to see us build the characters around. One of them is that Dragonborn you did with the yellow cape. Oh right, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. So excellent. And uh, then the two tieflings, uh, sorcerers. All oh, the ones you painted. Yeah. All right. Okay. Do you want me to bring them in? They're in here. 
No. No, no it's no. okay. We don't want to cross-contaminate. Okay. Nah. See, they're going to be on screen plenty tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be fun, and then we're going to do uh, board games and beyond tomorrow. Yes. Should yeah. be fun. I'm excited to see this, uh, this new format. I know you've had a bunch of ideas. And, and it's going to be, you know, this is the first run. It's going to be a... Um, it's going to be terrible. A journey. It's going to be a journey. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. I mean, it's going to be... I feel like it's going to metamorphosize into something more as we continue to do it. But okay. But we just got to get it started. Sure. You know. Cannon asked, what did, my what did my character become? The one that he painted. A drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, oh, yeah, he, yeah no, he, he, he is. He was a barbarian. He's a barbarian who started his adventuring career later in life. Clobberjaw. Yep, clobberjaw. <laughs> Something clob. And he... Um, Sounds like he started as a drunk. Well, he had to find himself in, into his cups because of the tragedy that led him to the path of adventure. It was never in his... He never truly wanted to be an adventurer. Right. He was just a... Uh, but then he took an arrow to the knee? No. No, sorry. No. It's the other way around, isn't it? His entire family took arrows to the knees oh. and faces yeah, and faces backs. and backs. Yeah. Bodies and... Mm -hmm. That's no good. No. No good for anybody. But that's what happened. All right. And that tragedy caused him to go on a revenge path. Right. To slaughter the villains that did the deed. Yeah. And they kind of just kept him on that path. Right. So it's kind of a um, Punisher kind of thing? Kind of a Punisher kind Where of thing, yeah. stayed on the... The path of, uh, yeah, punishment. Of revenge. <laughs> yeah, revenge and punishment to those who do the wrongs. Right. And he's met up with our other characters. Yeah. That's kind of... Excellent. Yeah, so we're making a whole little adventuring party, and uh, it's actually pretty neat. It's a great idea. So, um, what company made that miniature, by the way, Canon? Because uh, people had asked, and I didn't know the answer to it. So, Craig says um, that he has two tiefling figures that um, that he he got, mm -hmm. and it's his character Servius Shadowhorn who's a Hexblade Warlock, and his twin. Nice. An NPC blood hunter. Wow. A blood, blood hunter, hunter was the I think class it's the Matt Mercer made, right? I believe it is. Or no, Gunslinger was Well, the Gunslinger is one of them. He's made more than one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that guy got his fingers in all the D&D &D bowls. All the pies. Yeah. Which is what also caused our barbarian to go mad. <laughs> oh, the Matt Mosa was uh, no making a lot of character classes or what? Cannon says it was an old Rack Rackham model from the com confrontation line. Okay. Oh wow. Cool. The uh, there's a French oh there's a company about to uh, sort of relaunch all of that. Are they really? In the, all the confrontation stuff, yeah. Hmm. I actually have never heard of them. No? Nope. Oh. So. Speaking of never hearing from somebody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least it wasn't my Siri this time. <laughs> we rewatched that. It was so funny. Oh, it's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> I saw that too. I was like, oh, God. Hey, Siri. <laughs> yeah, screw you. No, no, not this time. Yeah, uh, but you know, yeah, could have happened again. <laughs> it was a glorious event. <clears throat> yeah, you made gunslinger, blood hunter, lingering soul, and now a duck totem barbarian. Duck totem barbarian. That sounds like a joke. For a second there, I thought you said duff toting. Duff toting uh, barbarian, which was obviously duff this, beer. this drunkard. Clubber face? Yeah. Was it clubber face? Clubber face? No. Clobber, clobber jaw. Clubber jaw? Yeah, clobber. Okay. Oh. <laughs> who, who sounds like a He-Man villain. It's true. He does. Yeah. Totally. But he's a softie. 
Okay. He's like the dad. Yeah. Mini Painting Studio says, can't wait for the Rackham um, Kickstarter. Over 160, he believes, minis in the box. Wow. From 16 factions and stretch goals. Woohoo. That's yep. crazy. Yeah, they're doing a, a thing where kind of a little bit like, the, I guess, the... What's that other company? Resurrection Games? Is that one? Restoration what Games. Restoration Games. Restoration Games. So doing something similar where they're, they're doing a... Uh, the one that Josh is talking about is... Uh, 160 out of the classic miniatures. Okay. Uh, so they've got they've got a lot of different minis already that they're, mm-hmm. they're going to be drawing on. Uh, and then I think the following year they're going to be doing a. Um, so they're approaching this one as a classic thing, and everything's part of the classic world. Okay. And then next year they're following it up with a like moving the world forward. Oh wow! Into a sort of a new. Uh, a new age? New age is probably the best way to put it. But uh, with uh, new miniatures for existing factions and new factions and okay. factions working differently and all that sort of stuff. Nice. But no, uh, Rackham, uh, well, Confrontation came out in the late 90s, I think. Okay. Uh, and some fantastic, absolutely fantastic sculpts. Um, Spectacular stuff. I never played the game myself, but uh, I think they were they were probably the, the first people to do a lot of uh, non-metallic metal painting on their studio models. Oh, okay. Uh, the ones that sort of popularized it because the sculpts were fantastic and the paint jobs they were putting on there were, were excellent. People wanted to mimic. So they're probably going to have just some really ph- phenomenal sculpts in their new line then. Yeah. We have a question from Corey Dean Leal. Hey. Um, they were asking about, I have problems with my smaller detail brushes curling at the t- tip. Okay. Any tips on how to prevent this from happening? I clean my brushes, but it still happens. Right. Are they, um, I guess the question, are they, are they sort of curling over like like this? Uh, is it showing sure. in the? Let me see what I got. I'm sure I have one doing it. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. Um, I have no doubt, unless somebody went through and culled them. Nah. Y- yours just splay out, really. They didn't do all the curling. <laughs> this one has a little curl at the tip. Yep. Right here. Um, what we tend to find is that if it's curling, um, the brush might be, a synth- it might be synthetic hair. They said yes, it curls like the way that you had no, demonstrated. Had it okay, so uh, do you know if it's synthetic or natural fiber? Um, hmm? I said I don't know. No, no, no. You, but I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm asking okay. the the viewer. If I was Corey. <laughs> Co- was Corey? Was it Corey? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So Corey, <laughs> um, you let us know if it was uh, if you know if it's a uh, synthetic or um, it's synthetic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, synthetic brushes tend not to last a particularly long time. Um, Getting uh, natural fibers are going to last a lot longer. So, um, the most po- well, one of the most popular for detailed brushes uh, for miniature painting is Kalinsky Sable, um, which we've had a con- conversation about before, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can see here on my brush here, Kalinsky Sable, um, which is actually a weasel, we think. Weasel or ferret? Weasel or ferret. Uh, not a sable. But... Uh, yeah, the natural uh, fiber, not natural hair brushes have a lot of their own um, sort of oils from the hairs, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, which keep them, keep sort of bringing them together. It means you can keep a point sort of nice and shaped there, um, which is why using a, a brush soap is a good idea. Okay. Because that can restore some of that, um, those oils or that sort of... Um, feels in them. One thing, I do a lot of brush licking, which mm-hmm. actually removes some of those oils. Okay. It's not particularly good for the brush. But, um, yeah, so I'd, I'd recommend uh, for your detail brushes in particular, getting some um, Kalinsky Sable brushes. There's a lot of uh, companies around that do it. I use um, Broken Toad. Uh, this one's my 3.0. 
Oops. And then you just get in a new one, a new 2.0? I did. This is my new, uh, oh, this is my new 2. Oh, 2. So, yeah, which is really nice. But, uh, yeah, the, um, it's a broken toad. Uh, Windsor & Newton is probably the most famous, famous of the okay. brands. There's uh, Rosemary & Co., Scharf, uh, Games & Gears do Kalinsky Sable brushes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of options out there. He said, um, looks like I'm going to be changing my brushes then. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Um, and depending on how comfortable you are with, uh, I'll show you sort of back on this close cam, you can see the, the bristles on this are quite, quite long for brush bristles, so they're so at least longer, wider than my um, pinky nail. Uh, when you're looking at, um, so at brushes online, um, <laughs> big one to avoid, if you like brushes like this, is avoid the Winsor & Newton miniature brushes. Okay. You might look at it and go, oh, miniature. It's not for making, painting miniatures. Are these really tiny brushes? They're just, they're short, really short hair. Oh, I really thought short, maybe they'd be short short like bristles. tiny brushes you actually give to miniatures and make it look like they're painting. That would be awesome. Right? How cool would that be? Right. <laughs> but no, sadly, it's Damn. not that. But uh, no, it's just uh, really shorter bristles on there. And if like, you're somebody like myself who like likes to have that big belly to it. Like that? Like that? <laughs> not quite that. <laughs> This is the insane detail yeah, brush. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, yeah, the insane detail brush there from um, Army Painter. Army Painter. Oh no, this one's the Psycho. The Psycho. <laughs> it has like three hairs. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yep. Uh, so yeah, just be aware of that. It's a kind of a crazy thing. Corey said, "I do prefer the longer brushes." So okay, then make sure to look out. Yeah, check those those out. Um, are you in the U.S., Corey? If he is. Um, I think Rosemary & Co., Schaff, and uh, are made in the U.S. Okay. Uh, and Broken Toad, is in, there's an importer in the U.S. as well, so you can get it all sent with reasonable shipping. Okay. Nice. Nice. Indeed. Yeah. Craig says, I tempted... I... I, I'm tempted, sorry, I'm tempted to attempt making my own terrain here soon. Oh, cool. Ooh, that would be cool. I'd like to see nice. that. Terrain for any particular game or just sort of fantasy or sort of generic sci-fi terrain? I believe fantasy is really the only terrain someone should build. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that? because uh, preference. Preference, personal yeah. preference. Personal preference. Yeah. Yes, what you're saying is that it, if he likes fantasy better. If you had your way, that there wouldn't be no sci-fi. Um, you can just buy sci-fi train. Oh, okay. Because right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's sci sci sci-fi. You know, it's futuristic. You got to pay for that right. with credits. Oh, uh, I see. None, none of this, you right. know, gold bits. Right. Craig said for his D and D group. <sighs> There you go. I'll hand it all over to Rick. Right. I, I don't know. I've never, <laughs> I've never built train. Also, yeah. Keith said hi, and James says he has about 10 minutes left. What's up, James? What's hey. up, Keith? Hey, James, we'll try and make the, the next 10 minutes worth it. <laughs> and James also <laughs> said I use the GW brushes. They aren't too bad. Yep. They're good. Uh, I use those as well occasionally. I'm going to just rummage through my paint here for a sec. Sorry about the extra noise, but... Where does it go? I guess I didn't put it in. Oh. I was looking for my P3 coal black. Ooh, P3. P3. And your very official paint box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is P3 isn't one that we use very often. No, not a lot. Um, there are a few, a few colors in the range that I really like. Coal black is an awesome one for, um, for highlighting black. Or for shading reds, because okay. it's a, a really sort of deep uh, green, actually, nice. kind of with a green tinge to it. So this guy here, for bloated sake, has a lovely little pouch on his belt there. You can see uh, that I'm going to put some green into, which will be a nice 
in contrast with the uh, with the red right on his armor. So. Cannon said um, he started to use the army painter. He started to use the army painter brushes, brushes. and he likes them. Cool. I like them as well. I mean, I've got uh, the games and gears brushes, but Dave's already said I've ruined those. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hopefully I ruined them in by using them well and right. often. <laughs> the uh, yep, I think the like the starter brush or the standard brush from uh, the Army Painter mm -hmm. is a synthetic brush. Oh wow! Um, but some of the others, the more detailed ones, uh, are natural hair. Synthetic will last a little bit longer. Um, for really rough applications or quick applications. Okay. So if you're painting large areas, a lot of large areas, a synthetic brush can be good for that. that. But um, they don't really keep that point for very long. So uh, if you're just splashing paint around, if you're throwing on washes, uh, if you're doing some dry brushing, mm -hmm. synthetics work pretty well for those. James says, it's always worth it. I love the broadcast. Thanks, James. <laughs> cool. And then Cannon says, Dave, get Grave Digger Denim. I think he's referring to a color. Oh, from uh, the Army Painter? Yes. Yeah. He says okay. use that. I've been, for my, uh, for my denim stuff, any denim that I paint, I've been using um, Thunderhawk Blue. Thunderhawk. Thunderhawk. <laughs> Blue from the GW range. Um, and mixing that in with uh, like the Imperial Blue from um, the Blehu game color range. That works really well. Nice. You can get a really good uh, faded denim kind of feel. I'm guessing it's the same with Grave Digger denim, Canon. It's the weirdest conversations to have. <laughs> yeah. weirdest way, no, I guess the weirdest <laughs> way to have conversations. <laughs> he says yeah. no P3. I'm not sure what he was referring to. And then um, Jeremy says as bases for comparing what's very long, quote unquote very long, how long should I expect a sable brush <laughs> to keep its point? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's also depends on how many miniatures you paint. Um, usually, uh, like this one that I've got here, this should uh, keep its point for, for me, probably for about six months, five or six months, which will be about 200 to 300 miniatures. Wow. So um, if you paint more slowly than I do, <laughs> uh, I, I also use this one because it's got that beautiful point. I also use this one for, um, for all my detail work or as much work as possible on each brush. Uh, but yeah, it could last a year, two years. Um, nice. That kind of thing. But yeah, I've painted eyes with this. You can see the super fine tip there. So. Jeremy says, cool, thank you. That's what I was looking for. No worries. Oh, good. Oh, no, he was saying there's a grave digger denim from the P3 line. Oh, P from the P3? Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, That's I have what Cannon was saying. I'll have to check that out then. I think there's... It might be uh, dirty denim or um, something like that from the Army Painter range. Is three is P three an acronym for shorting? For uh, yes, yeah, your press paints. Private your press, okay. press paints. Yeah. Corey was wondering. Right. So yeah, the P three paints are in uh, bottles that look like this. So this is one of my. Uh, one of the ones that I like a lot, which is Rin Flesh, which is really good for uh, highlights on Caucasian skin. So here's an example of that. So this guy, you get some really nice, um, nice highlights there. Draw. I don't know why, but <laughs> it just really amuses me to do that to the camera every time. <laughs> 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 Jesse said number two is the mini painter's best friend. Yeah. Hmm. I think so. 
So what did you guys do yesterday, Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah, did you guys have any... When we went talking about painting? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. What did you get up to? I, well, here at work yesterday, uh, around 4 o'clock, yeah. uh, I had to play a little trivia game. Okay. So The Rock joined up with this company called HQ Trivia, whatever. Okay. Yeah. And they do live trivia on, on a phone app. Okay. And you can win money. Yeah. Like li- real, real, real money. Real money. Like so cash dollars. Cash dollars. Cash dollars, y'all. And um, <laughs> The Rock, in a promotion for his movie um, Rampage, Rampage. Rampage. Uh, they had a $300,000 pot. Oh, wow. And you have to answer all the questions correctly in the in the contest, which uh, yesterday's was 15 questions. Okay. And if you answered them all correctly, you shared in the pot. All right. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, and he and, and the Rock hosted it, so he's on. You know, sitting there talking to you. Yeah. Live. Right. <laughs> He was making some mistakes in the beginning, you know, because he's not a live video guy unless he was, you know, even, even when he was doing wrestling, that was all pre-recorded right. stuff, you know, so yeah. N- for like the us. most part. Yeah, they're not he, not a pro not like a us. Not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in the end, yep. there was only, I want to say like 64 or something like that, or 84 that People who they made it to went the list. all the way to the end. Oh wow! So they each got like three thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars. Wow! That's I cool. did not make it to the end. I was going to say I think say. I made it to like question seven or eight. Okay. And then the ninth, eighth or ninth question is the one that knocked me out of the running. Right. But uh, it, it was it was pretty funny. And what's what's funny is the the question I got wrong. Uh, Josh and uh, Kevin knew the answer and they're talking about it, but I wasn't listening. Oh. And I was, because I was just like, because you only have 10 seconds. Because you were focused, right. And uh, I, it was it had to do with um, the prairies, okay. a certain type of prairie that's in, that, basically what the prairie that the Everglades are. Okay. The, whatever that grass or, or plant life that the Everglades are consisting of. Right. Um, the mangroves trees? No, it's, 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 it's a mm-hmm. smaller uh, oh, prairie okay. plant. I'm like, prairie? <laughs> the other two choices, like, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoops. But, um, and then what sucked is I knew every question after that. Oh, that's like, terrible. I got knocked out, and yet I, I was like, ah, oh, curses. But it was fun. That's cool. And they, they did a $250,000 one for um, Ready Player One. Okay. So. Did you play in that one? Well? No, I, I only started playing it two days ago. Right. And uh, I haven't gotten to the end on any of them yet. Right. <laughs> so. Well, you're still here, obviously. Well, even then, I you know, yep. it's only a, a paycheck. Right. But uh, and then when you're playing in the the normal ones that are like five thousand dollar events, yeah. Uh, you know, enough people win where you're only getting like a dollar or two, maybe three dollars. Oh, okay. So. Right. Yeah. But it's still fun. And how long, uh, how long do you have to do that? Uh, you have 12 questions, 10 seconds each. Right. And, um, but it, it's fun. I like, I like trivia. I play Jeopardy every day or watch Jeopardy. And right. then I play Alexa's uh, J6, okay. which is you know, another answer to every category <laughs> that was on that day. I tried playing that the other day, and I was so bad. I got every single question wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Nope. I only know trivia about, like, history. <laughs> right. And they do not ask enough history. No. It was all pop culture, yeah. and I was like, crap. And sports. I was like, I don't know anything about sports. I think sports. it's funny. She says it was all pop culture, and I work in a pop culture industry. <laughs> <laughs> pop culture that I don't pay attention to. Oh, okay. I should be clear. It's all about Taylor Swift. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Corey says, You fellas are my rock. LOL. Nice. <laughs> you know, speaking of Jeopardy, I remember one time watching it 
and there was a category where it was like superhero alter egos, mm-hmm. and everyone that was playing saved that category for last, and when they eventually got to it, not a single one of them knew any of the alter egos. It was like, you know, the Hulk. Bruce Banner. Dead silence. And I'm sitting there <laughs> screaming at my TV like, come on! Yeah, those are funny. Bruce Banner? It is Bruce Banner. Okay, yeah. Right. Or Dr. David Bruce Banner. It depends on, okay, right. you know, where you're catching it. Do you think he's going to die? In Infinity War? Yeah. In Infinity? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it was just really a question. I, I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to wind you up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, Rick's not sure he can finish the stream. <laughs> I, no, I... He knows. I know things. some stuff. Ah. Quiet. And I'm not going to say nothing. All right. Never mind. <laughs> Kurt says, shut it, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kurt. <laughs> Hi, Kurt. <laughs> it's one of the curses of also being in the pop culture industry. <laughs> is you find stuff out. Yep. Like when you go to toy meetings over at the home office and talk about product meetings and they're talking about the Infinity War toys coming out that you get to see before, you know, they won't be released. Some of these won't be released until after the movie because they're, they're straight up spoilers. It's like, come on. And then you look at it and you go, there's no Hawkeye, just like in the ad, in the trailer. Why is Hawkeye not in the trailer? So. <laughs> I got no idea. I'm, I'm not going to say anything up. about that, but I will say something <laughs> no, it's about. True. The, it's I funny. Is, yeah. Yeah. I knew um, that first part. Uh, part of it was true. Another company that we work with very closely here at, at Game Trade Media is USAopoly. Okay. And they have uh, Thanos Rising, right. which is a board game uh, where Thanos is trying to find the Infinity Stones and you play one of four characters, and then you're recruiting other characters to fight Thanos and Thanos' minions. And uh, Hawkeye is, appears in the box in, okay. the, in the game, so... Yeah. But so do other characters, and you're just like, why are you in here? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a spoiler to the movie by any means, but okay. it's nice to see him in, in, in the game. Right, cool. That's good. Well, Jeremy Renner's also listed on IMDb as being in the movie, so... Well, yeah, yeah. That could be a flashback. It's just the, the thing, like, there are so many characters in there that when some of them don't make it into, like, a 30-second spot. <laughs> right. How dare they Or not? any 30-second spot. How dare they Do you think that? that was the problem with the movie makers? It's like they had so many people in the cast that yeah. maybe when they were putting the, t- the trailer together, like, oh, shoot, we actually forgot Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> I think Because there's just so, that many. Yep. I totally forgot about you. Sorry about that. Kurt says Thanos Rising is no joke. Looks great. Yeah, it's it's a nice looking game. You've been you got a copy of it to play with yet? No, well, I mean, I just looked at your copy. Okay. It looks nice. Well, I'm gonna have to give it to you to make a video on. Yes. Cool. And Leona, don't cover up for Kurt's spelling mistakes. He said Thanos. <laughs> That's true. Who he says that? <laughs> Kurt did. He first said Thanos. <laughs> what? His computer spelled it Thankos. Mm, his computer. <laughs> well, he is, <laughs> he is speaking from beyond. That is true. <laughs> we do... Uh, it's his Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do miss our Kurt. May he rest in peace. Yeah, yeah speak for yourself. <laughs> Mini Painting Studio says Thankos for all your power glove printing needs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's good, a good job. One. Uh, Nice one. Oh, well played. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Kurt says, thank us, everyone. And then Corey says, Deadpool saves the universe, LOL, after credit scene, maybe. <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> Man. Fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm w- curious about is... I'm, you know, the movie I'm really excited about, but I'm really curious about what kind of after scene credit. Uh, well, after credit scene. What he said. Are we going to get, is, you know, are we going to get, you know, I, don't, I can't even speculate. But, because, uh, you know, who knows? Who yeah. knows what we're going to get are you gonna in put this movie? after the movie that has everybody in it? <sighs> right. Are they going to show Probably new everybody? Yeah. Probably are we going to see new everybody's? Are all the movies after it going to be a lot like um, sort of uh, X Files after the X Files movie? I hope not. Yeah. Where it's yeah. kind of like, ta-da! Oh, 
Yeah, let's just go back. I don't I pretend that not. none of that happened. I hope not. Yeah. Kurt okay. says Aquaman after credit scene. Oh. Just saying. Hang or on. Namor. That's I mean, crossing the streams, isn't it? It is, and we don't do that. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Kurt yeah. is seriously losing geek cred right now. I know, right? Tons of it. <laughs> when did he have it? When did he have it? Corey says, gotta go. Thanks for the brush info. <laughs> no worries, Corey. All right, Corey. Thanks for hanging out. I th- so what my thoughts are is, you know, we already know we've got another Ant-Man movie coming up after the Avengers movie. Right. The Wasp one. The wa- Ant-Man and Wasp. Yep. There's a Captain Marvel movie coming out, so I'm hoping that we'll see Captain Marvel in the Avengers Infinity movie. Oh, okay. You know? The, yeah. And I'm not just going to show up at the end and go, I'm here! It's like, oh, well, you're well, done? You, okay. you might have to because it's a, the, the Infinity War is only a part one. Oh, wow. There, yeah, it's a Captain two, Marvel's It's a two-part. Two. I think so, too. Hmm. I'm, it would be in that case, I'm going to say I don't think he is. <sighs> it would be funny though if the after credit was like Batman, Superman, Aquaman <laughs> <laughs> in the Marvel after credit. Can I go on what? So this is what it would like to be in bright colors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. You can't take anything I say seriously. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> well, certainly when it comes to comics. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I would recommend to anybody that really doesn't know the Thanos story is go and check out your local comic book shop and read. There's some really good um, graphic novels out there. Okay. And I think we, we, you know, we recent uh, we did a fan five around that, right, John? We filmed it. I haven't edited it and yeah. put it together yet. But it's got, you know, Thanos Quest, um, the Infinity Gauntlet uh, story arc, the Infinity War story arc, the Infinity Crusade <laughs> story yeah. arc, and then there's a bunch of other standalone Thanos-themed um, books that you should probably check out because yeah. there's a lot of interesting mythology to Thanos himself. Okay. Kurt says, crossover is going to happen. I know the same people as Rick. Well, that homeless guy Smiley who I get face. all my information <laughs> from... Uh, and your pancakes. And my pancakes. <laughs> Cannon says, I think that Lee Pace as Ronan will be in the Captain Marvel movie. Yeah, from what I understand, Captain Marvel is actually a throwback movie. Like, they're, it's going back in time um, in some capacity. Not, not, not like actually, you know, a time-traveling movie, but it takes place well before. in the 90s or something oh, okay, like that. Yeah. Before yeah, I heard that too. Before all the stuff that occurred in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and all that stuff. Okay. Interesting. Everybody remembers Dark Claw, the the Batman Wolverine mashup. Oh yeah, by Amalgam Comics. Yeah. I don't. Well, we are going to have to educate you on <laughs> Dark Claw then, because <laughs> it was actually really good. They had that one. They had. Um, um, the Iron Lantern, which was a mix between Green Lantern and Iron Man, right. which was really cool. It had uh, Super Soldier, which was Captain America and Superman. Yep. Yeah, a bunch of cool characters came out of that crossover. I concur. They didn't want to go with Green Man <laughs> for the Iron, Iron Man Green Lantern <laughs> crossover. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> or Aquaman? Yeah. The Aquaman Iron Man crossover. Yep. <laughs> like the Aqualung? <laughs> or Batman? Exactly. The Batman Iron Man crossover. Exactly. Dang it. It's like really confusing. <laughs> You've just ripped that character off from that other one. No, I've ripped two of them off. <laughs> Mini Painting Studio says, What about Aqua Torch? He just uses smoke powers. <laughs> right. You guys are ruining the comics for Doctor me. Strange Fate. <laughs> I think that was an actual one. Okay. Yeah. Doctor Strange Face? N- Strange Fate. Fate. So Fate. Yeah, Doctor okay. Fate and Doctor Strange Mix. Okay. I just kept going back to cl- Clubber Jaw. <laughs> Clubber <laughs> Jaw. <laughs> telling you. The guy's got legs. He's got legs as a Master of the Universe. 
villain. Yeah. Or a yeah, uh, Thundercats villain. You got a lot of places. Yeah. Maybe all good. There we go. Now it's time to put a little bit of bright and shining silver on the. Uh... Want some shining silver? Oh, yeah, some bright and shining silver. That'd be great. Uh, on the weapons. So it'll make those. Uh, that blood splatter stand out a lot better. Nice. Craig says, picture Hulk with a red lantern ring. Shudder. No. Yeah, that would be a scary sight. Anybody watch um, Legends of Tomorrow? Speaking of uh, power stones or totems. No. What's Legends of Tomorrow? So Legends of Tomorrow is another DC Universe uh, TV show that's on, like, with Arrow, Flash, Supergirl. Okay. It's got um, Ray Palmer, who is the um, uh, the Atom, and it's got Black Canary, or not Black Canary, White Canary, and um, Firestorm. Or was, Firestorm was on it. Now it's uh, Kid Flash, um, uh, Heat Wave, and <clears throat> uh, Vixen, who has like a totem where she touches it and she has the speed of a cheetah, strength of a bear type situation. Okay. So this season, this past season, the finale was just this past uh, Monday, I believe it was. Uh, but so they had to find all these totems, and it was like five or six totems, and they're all basically like infinity stones. Right, okay. Uh, and, and then they had to, in, in the final episode, they have to join all the totems together to create a being to fight off the main the main bad guy. And as they're doing it, I'm sitting there going, they're making, they're going to make Planet, Captain Planet. They're going to freaking make Captain Planet. But they didn't. No. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I'm not going to ruin it for you as to what they did make and how campy that show right. really is. <laughs> Yeah, I had a friend who watched it for a while, but she was like, it's just too... It's super campy. ...campy for me. <laughs> and one of her... <laughs> Kurt says, spoiler alert. <laughs> 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 and one of her favorite characters, like, died or something like that? I don't remember, what? but it wasn't on the Oh, show yeah. Anymore. Yeah, in yeah. earlier, earlier, like, like yeah, uh, last earlier. season. Um, yeah, Craig says, I'm not there yet, Rick, so... <laughs> what? I don't understand how you guys can't be there. Understand that if there's, a, if there's anything that you enjoy in pop culture, I will sure watch it spoiler. before you watch yeah, the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's true. Because we'll, we'll, we'll ruin talk it. about it and it will be spoiled. <laughs> Man, come on. <laughs> we do have some really pro, pro uh, paint caddies. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's the worst. Gonna increase the budget, I think. <laughs> Kurt uh, says uh, he is worst. <laughs> he is worst. Rick is worst. I am worst <laughs> when it comes to spoilers. That's not really a spoiler. I mean, it was it, it was on Monday, and if you missed it, <laughs> three days ago. <laughs> not all of us care enough. That's what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, that's exactly it. Or you guys actually have... Like lives. Lives. <laughs> <laughs> lives outside of pop culture. Yeah. Yeah, but what is the statue of limitation for spoilers? I'm like, spoiler alert, Vader is Luke's dad. <laughs> <gasps> Ruined. <laughs> How long do you have to wait until something becomes... Is like, you don't have to worry about spoiling it for someone. That's a good question. Um, I think it depends on the, on the, the medium. size. Well, the, there's the meteor and there's... But the, the size of the spoiler, I guess. It's like, um, there are some things in a movie that the whole movie leads you to that twist. So like Sixth Sense or The Crying Game. And those, you'd, there's a couple of things that you'd never want to spoil. That's my thought. Oh, for someone that's never seen it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean... Sure, you can get to mention it, and somebody goes, "Oh, I haven't seen that yet." No, it's new. Yeah, now you know. Now you know how to. What you gotta kind of 
but you just you just don't mention those information things. on that. Yeah. Carl says once Family Guy or Robot Chicken does a spoof of it, it's fair game. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's actually good criteria. I like that. <laughs> good call. I I like that because once you spoof it, it means enough people have to know about it. So. Right. So it's okay. I can see that. So I better spoof it real quick. <clears throat> Rick. What? Don't do it. Can't we spoof stuff? No. We got to come up with a viral video to put out there for people to be like, what? Yeah. Maybe we should just spoof something. Okay. Something that came out yesterday. <laughs> 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 Can we spoof the Zuckerberg trials? Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Oh, I think they've been... That's oh, a... I'm sorry. Was that too spoiler alert? <laughs> um, spoiler alert. Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook are on trial. <laughs> Mr. Zuckerberg, um, how is it that if I'm playing poker, it's not a deck-building game? What's the difference between poker and a deck-building game? Do you have deck building games? I mean, I'm trying to think of a spoof okay. way to do it in, in like a board gamey sort of way. Yeah. I know it's not it's not coming across very good right now. <laughs> it's in its infancy. All I'm saying is that maybe off maybe off <laughs> camera we could brainstorm. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But my brain will hurt. <laughs> this joke is in the works. Rick, <laughs> do you remember what I said to you about inner monologue? <laughs> you guys hear that? <laughs> nope. Must have just been for you. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. There we go. So I think he's looking pretty good. I really like that uh, the green pouch there. The heck is a Zuckerberg. What's that? The, <laughs> the heck is a Zuckerberg. Uh, I don't know, but... I'm really excited for Zuckerbucks. <laughs> Zuckerbucks. Yeah, it's going to be a, a blockchain, uh, Bitcoin-like currency. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Zuckerbucks. Zuckerbucks. That's funny. I'm gonna put a little bit of damage on this uh, this plate, yeah. and then get into applying. Playing what? The blood for the blood god. Mm. If only we had time. If only we had time? What are you saying? It's time. No, we got it time. Is. We don't have time. Time is up. Hurry. No blood for the blood god. Oh. We can run over by. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> we, can, we can run over by a little bit, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. They just rush us at the end because they're like, we got to go do other things. <laughs> we got work to do. Enough of you guys goofing off. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, just that's the blood for the blood god. Comes out of the pot fairly thick. And then you just sort of slap that on, drag it back. Oh, that, yeah. That looks good. Yep. And remember to do it on both sides of the blade. Craig, Craig says, corn lives. Yep. How do you spell it? The way that you're supposed to. M-A-I-Z. <laughs> M-A-I-Z. My people call it maize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should probably put, them, okay, so put these bad boys on the spinner, huh? Put that on the weapon. And I'm also going to do a splash of it. Across his chest. A few dots on the mask. Just like that. And place some on the knee. When you're sitting there swinging this big axe around, there's going to be some collateral damage. 
check out the Meg trailer. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, what was it? Yep. The Megalodon? Yep, or, the Megalodon. Uh, Shark-like creatures? Yep. Yeah. Shut up, Meg. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I want to say. <laughs> Shut up, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is looking really good. Yep. All right, let's uh, get rid of these guys. And now for the real show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Okay. Much there death. Yeah, so I got a little, little, little bit more work to do on his. Uh, those metallics on the silvers there. Bring those up. Corn. <laughs> <laughs> you know these guys listen to heavy metal. Yep, for sure. Yeah, they look great. That's all I hear. Look at that. A big splash of blood. Splashes of blood. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Cool. Well, there you have Not it, ladies and much. gentlemen. You got an opportunity to see some really good painting and then some of really my painting. <laughs> Your um, painting is coming along. It is coming along. It's in there. You're uh, improving your neatness, which is really nice to see. Yeah. It's definitely cool. Well, I'm thinning my paints out better, I think. Yeah. And uh, which is important. I'm almost thinking I probably should be using a wet palette of some sort. Right. Just to keep it that way. Possibly, yeah. You guys hear that out there? People out there yelling in the next space over? Ugh. But um I don't know. So <laughs> make sure you go to your friendly local game store if you do not already have a copy of Shade Spire, which is uh, <gasps> Right over here on the floor, right there. So you can go and pick one up. Yep. And uh, you can also a, check out uh, WarhammerUnderworlds.com mm -hmm. and uh, the Warhammer-Community.com page for more information for about more Chase intel. And also check out our Facebook group for Painting Happy Little Minis. You can just uh, search Painting Happy Little Minis and we'll uh, let you in and show us all the cool stuff you are you are painting out there in uh, the universe beyond in our cameras. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of the camera. But you That's know what, I think, I think I might have to just give one of these away to somebody. I have a, I have a copy of Shade oh, yeah. Spire. I think uh, this is your copy. That's my copy. I yeah. have a copy in my office, and um, I think cool? we'll put something in the Painting Happy Little Minis group. Excellent. And so it'll be for our group uh, fans and friends. Yep. And uh, so we'll put something there real soon, and uh, we'll choose a winner on Tuesday next week. And, uh, Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And there we have it. Yep. I've been. This has been Painting Happy Luminis. It's a show we do <laughs> twice a week at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Tuesdays, Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.